for the trophy rounds of the 2017 Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championships. Look, we've dressed up for the finals. I'm Brittany Kanagati. And I'm Sam Ostone. We have a little surprise for you. Because we want to talk about the brand new game this year, Duel Links, we won't keep you in suspense about who the finalists are. Really? And we won't keep you waiting to see who wins. Wait, what do you mean, Sam? We're going to show that game before we show the other final duels. The Duel Links final is a little later in this very episode. That's great. I've been curious. It being new and all. Okay, so here's who's playing. It'll be Timmy Chu from New Zealand versus D. John Thomas from Sweden in the very first Duel Links competition in the World Championships. Head judge Andrew Bowling describes the game. So Duel Links is an additional thing we're doing this year. That's actually a um, phone game based on Yu-Gi-Oh that players can play on their phone. Yu-Gi-Oh Duel Links. Um, they can play just by themselves against the, the game. It gives them challenges. They can level up. But they can also play interactively across the World Wide Web against other players. And for this tournament, about two months ago in that game, they announced a file fire and players played against each other and in their respective regions and through their skill earn the right to be here to come to Japan as well. I may have lost, but I have no regrets. Kanichi Kataoka is the senior producer of the Duel Links mobile game. One of our design philosophies behind Duel Links is to create a doorway for players who maybe are interested in the card game but thought it was too difficult to try and learn, and people who have never touched the card game before. Lots going on. Before we show you the Duel Links final match, though, let's talk about the semifinalists for the other contests. Four semifinalists for Dragon Duels, the under-13 trading card game competition, and four for the main TCG event will play another round before the audience members take their seats. This round will determine those contests' finalists. You follow? Let's say that again. <laughs> Four semifinalists for Dragon Duels, the under-13 trading card game competition, and four for the main TCG event will play another round before the audience members take their seats. This round will determine those contest finalists. Okay, you've got it now. The four semifinalists for Dragon Duel are Rafael Mariano Reich from Brazil, who will be playing against Eric Topol from Germany. Ryan Yu from Canada will be going head to head with his best friend, Charlie Futch from the United States. The semi final duelists for the main event championship were determined in a round that happened at the end of the first day. The semi finalists are Marcello Barberi of Italy versus Shen Fei Milton Schwa of Singapore. You can call him Milton. and. Ryosuke Sujimura of Japan versus Michael Forner of Italy. As audience members started to gather outside to see the final matches and the entertainment show introducing it, the semi final round began inside the arena. You have a world championship participants. Welcome to the top four. Congratulations. This round will be 40 minutes. Three, two, one, boom. winning and losing by the stony looks on their faces. Remember, part of the strategy of the card game is to keep an unreadable game face at all times. Their version of a poker face. So your opponent can't tell if you're bluffing or you have a devastating monster card or something in your hand ready to pounce. As the clock clicks down fast, one player is the first to claim a seat at the finals. Uh. My cards were strong, so I won. I've come this far. I want to show the strength of a Japanese player. I'll do my best. That leaves Marcello and Milton facing off on stage. Raphael with his signature game face. And Charlie and Ryan duking it out to see who will be in the finals later in the day. Soon, time runs out and the results become painfully clear. Charlie Futch has lost to his best friend.
but it doesn't take Charlie long to shrug off disappointment to speak about what happened. I'm still friends. Doesn't change anything. Just means he's better than me. Back in the arena, Marcello is not faring any better. After a long, torturous duel against Milton, Milton squeaks to victory. Didn't go as, as planned. Unfortunately, I lost in time just by like 200 or 300 life points, something like that. So no more uh, Europe winning. I guess we'll have to do it next year. With his future opponent sitting right behind him, Milton makes a claim about how he will do. You know, look, looking forward to win it. Bring back the goal. So what about Brazilian player Rafael Mariano Reich? With his father Christian pacing and staring and fidgeting in the stands right above him, Rafael takes his time until he finally breaks face and gives his dad the nod he's been waiting for. I was so worried before coming to the World Championships. Never, there has never been a Brazilian playing so well. For the first time already in the finals, couldn't be better. And now let's wait for the final. Rafael's father is emotional about the win. Of course, so happy for him. <laughs> More than him, probably. Father's Day in Brazil today, so I'm very happy. It's a great gift. Dynamite and Disciple Ramon. Masterpiece for Trek and Spell. So he's ready for the final. He knows everything about his cards and, and the cards that he must be playing, how to play it. It has finally arrived. The finals of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Trading Card Game World Championships 2017. 1,200 audience members have filed into their seats to watch the best of the best play in three finals competitions. Duel Links, which is new this year, Dragon Duel, and the main event. As promised, we're going to show you Duel Links first. Before we do that, let's show you some of the entertainment the audience gets to see. are introduced to the crowd one by one to music and loud cheers. <laughs> to the players on the stage and those who have competed sitting in the stands. It has to be exciting and perhaps a little overwhelming that everyone in the audience has come to see them. As Dijon Thomas, or Tut Pup as he's called in the game, and Timmy get ready to compete in the very first Duel Links competition at a world championship? Let's tell you more about the game. Gameplay is based on the original trading card game, but players have only 4,000 life points. Main phase two of the game is removed, and the number of monsters and spell trap zones on the virtual board is reduced to three. Some background here that will keep simple for new players. Before the game, both players decided they'll be using three different decks with different sets of cards. The first deck they're both using is called the Tune Deck. That requires that the player draws and plays a card called Tune Kingdom in order to be able to attack. Timmy sees his hand and uses a restart skill that can only be used once per game, and he gets the Tune Kingdom card he needs. He also happens to get other strong cards. Tup Pup has not drawn a Tune Kingdom card and really needs one to be in the game. He uses his restart skill and no, he doesn't get one. Now he's open to attack with no way to attack back. Timmy tributes his Skullmark Ladybug card to summon a card called Tune Dark Magician Girl while increasing his life points by 1,000. Timmy passes the turn over to Tut Pup, who still doesn't draw Toon Kingdom. Without this card, Tut Pup cannot summon his monsters and needs to defend precious life points, which means he teeters on an early loss. Tut Pup is in a dire situation and is depending on his defensive cards to buy him time. Timmy, seeing his opponent struggle, presses his advantage by using Toon Rollback, which lets his monster attack twice. 
Hot Pup tries to stay in the game, but he falls farther and farther behind, until Timmy is eventually able to successfully attack with an onslaught of Toon Monsters. Hot Pup loses! That gives you a taste for how exciting and fast the game is, and how it takes practice to get really good at it. And how it requires players to know the cards in their decks very well to be able to make split-second decisions about how to battle an opponent. The Duel Links final is best of three. Timmy is already up by one. Can Tut Pup come back? Let's go back to the stage. A thing you should know, Timmy can't use the Toon deck again, since he already won with it. So he's now playing with the Ninja's deck with something called the Beat Down Skill. How's that for scary? Playing the Toon deck again, Tut Pup redraws using his restart skill. And does he draw the one card he needs to be able to attack? No! Once again, he does not draw the Toon Kingdom card. And making it much worse for him, he gets nothing in his hand. Absolutely nothing that will allow him to defend himself. Meanwhile, Timmy draws an excellent hand and goes after his opponent right away. He ends his opponent with the Ninja Grandmaster Sasuke card. The match is over! I was pulling for Tut Pup to come back. Oh, how I love an underdog. Get it? Tut Pup? <laughs> Tut Pup played beautifully all tournament, but this shows that in this fast-paced game, you can lose fast if you don't get good cards in your first draw. Let's go back now to the arena and watch Timmy get his cool new trophy. In New Zealand, they always call me the bridesmaid because I'm always, I always come second. I'm always second place. Uh, now I finally have a victory. We have much more for you in our next episode. We'll bring you the highlights from the Dragon Duel and Main Event Finals. Really exciting. Come back and see us. Meantime, have a good morning, night, day, afternoon, a coffee break, whatever you're doing right now. Bye, everybody. <laughs>